surely when cards are being shuffled by humans, humans are not random machines, presumably. They have their human tics and mannerisms and habits. Sure. Does this affect the math, or is almost any human shuffle random enough for your math to work? It's a wonderful question. Let me try to match you with an answer. <laughs> uh, the model that the seven shuffle is based on, I'm going to say it as a, as a slightly more mathy thing. So you, cu you cut the cards about in half. Now, I'm, you have to make that precise if you're going to do math on it. It's according to the discrete version of the bell-shaped curve, what we call the binomial distribution. So you, you, you cut off cards, but sort of peaked around the middle, as people do. And now, if I have some number of cards here, say A cards here, and some number of cards here, say B cards here, the chance that I drop the next card from this hand is proportional to the packet size. So it's A over A plus B. So I, I either drop a card from here or a card from here, and then I keep doing that. That is, I use that rule. Either drop a card from left hand to right hand, but with the probability proportional to the packet size among what's left. Now that is a well-specified math rule, and you could put it on a computer, you could... So there's a question, which is the first part of your question, um, is, well, does that math rule have anything to do with the way real people shuffle real cards? And the answer is it's a wonderful approximation to the way real people shuffle real cards. How do I know that? I ask real people to shuffle cards thousands of times. I gather the data, I compare, I know how they drop, and I compare it with that model. Now, it's not a good mathematical model for the way I shuffle cards. I shuffle cards close to perfectly, one, 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 one. And casino dealers shuffle cards close to perfectly. And that's very different than this Gilbert Shannon Reed's model. It's the Ed Gilbert of Bell Labs, Claude Shannon of Bell Labs, Jim Reed's also of Bell Labs. And Claude Shannon's the famous Shannon of information theory. And they worked on shuffling cards. And, uh, and they thought, well, here's a model. This model captures the way real people shuffle real cards. A problem with neat shuffles is this. If you shuffle cards perfectly eight times, they come back to where they started. Ah, so it's sort of obvious if you have a deck of cards and you do the same repetitive process on it, it'll eventually come back. It's a you know, finite system. It has, to, it has to recur. And so neat shuffles are actually a poor way of shuffling. And if they're close to perfect, it's also a bad way to shuffle. And it, and it really can take a lot more. It, it, well, it, it, it could take, you know, 40 shuffles, for example. It, 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 well, it's, it's around log n squared, and so, uh, okay, so it's, you know, maybe it's, it's, maybe it's 20 shuffles of, of a certain kind of neat but random shuffle. Well, this is a problem for casinos, because most of their croupier, as I imagine, are good shufflers. Yes, and uh, it, 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 it is a problem. And one of the things I found out when we went public with this is that there are a, a cadre of card counters who try to take advantage of the fact that real shuffling, the casino shuffling is too neat. And they go in and they clock, you know, some guy brought a, a high-speed microphone into the casino and you could hear and you could tell, left, right, you could tell. And then a computer undid the shuffles and so he kind of would know what was going on. So there are four shuffle tracking journals, journals that come out, you know, six times a year. And people who sell little, you know, computer code that allows you to try to track shuffles. And uh, so it, it, does, it does matter. Now, the model that I analyzed, the seven shuffle model, so what do I do about that? Uh, the seven shuffle model is provably the most random method of riffle shuffling. Um, that is, any other method of riffle shuffling takes more. So no matter how you riffle shuffle, it will take you more than seven shuffles. So seven shuffles is a lower bound for any method of riffle shuffling. Of course, if you're a perfect shuffler, it never gets random. But if you have any randomness at all, eventually it will get random. But, um, but it, it'll always be more than three halves log to the base two of n. This is a rare item due to the fact that nearly all were destroyed by the company to make way for new shuffler models. Professor, I'm imagining a lot of people watching are going to want to know what you think about machines that shuffle cards. Are they good? Are they good? No, is the answer. Um, so 
I say that based on several, uh, first of all, there are a lot of machines. If you, you know, type in, you know, card shuffling machines, you'll find 30 different models. Uh, and uh, I have tried some of them, some of them, and I've tried to make math out of some of them. They're all worse than the real physical way we shuffle cards. It's because they have a mechanical interface and they just don't work very well. A typical scheme is um, there, there's a, a kind of thing you can buy for, you know, maybe five dollars or five pounds or something like that, uh, um, where the, the deck is in two piles and then um, wheels go underneath and the, the, the wheels turn and then the cards, um, the cards get pulled into a common, you know, they get pulled from either the left or the right as a kind of rubber wheel makes them go left or right. And cards are sticky, the wheels don't work so well, the cards seem to come in clumps. If you try it, you often find that the original bottom card's still on the bottom even after a few repetitions. So they're kind of kludgy mechanical devices and they just don't work very well. Now, in casinos, there are shuffling machines and, <laughs> well, I, I, one time I got, I got asked to go consult at the, a company that manufactures shuffling machines and I went and watched and the, I wish I had one to show you because they're just beautiful. The deck of cards is put on a, a, metal, a metal tray, but not a big one. And then um, two kind of mechanical fingers come and go like this. And then a, a kind of a mechanical thumb comes and cuts about half the cards off. And then they're put under pressure that way. And then a finger comes out of the back and it goes like that. And up they go. And then they get pushed together by steel plates. So the guy pushes a button, cut, push them together. I was just sitting there pushing the button and watching. This is beautiful, you know. I thought it would be great to have for a classroom demonstration, to have us a talk. I said to them, do you sell these things? And the guy said, no, well, we mostly lease them. And I said, well, well how much do they sell for? He said, well, I, about $12,000. I said, hmm, okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's not going to work. Those machines were going to be replaced by uh, a, different, a different scheme. And the, the scheme used a source of computer-generated random numbers. And, um, well, computers aren't so good at generating random numbers. It's often the best we have, but it's very different than the biological, psychological drive that randomizes things in, in, in humans. Um, without going into great detail, let me try to explain one issue, and I think that applies to mm, shuffling machines, uh, but it's even, I said, so in casinos you often see slot machines, you know, okay, out they come. No slot machine that is in casino nowadays works with physical randomness, gears and timing and stuff like that. All of them use computer chips that have pseudo-random number generators in them that determine what numbers come out. And it's just, you know, Hollywood, window dressing, what, what's shown. And they'll make it so that 777, where you would win the big prize, comes out just above the actual numbers that you see even though they do have to, by law, make the three numbers that you see be equally likely, it's all show business, okay? Given that computers are generating numbers, how does a computer generate random numbers? It can't flip coins, it doesn't flip coins, it doesn't use radioactivity, it should. Um, what they do is a simple recursive procedure. The next number is the 69069 times the last number modulo a big power of two. So there's a simple mechanical scheme where you, you given a number, you do something to it, square it or do something to it, and then take the middle digits or something like that. There's a simple mechanical scheme and, and the computer just iterates that the way computers are very good at it and shows you what's iterating. And so everything is determined by where the computer started. If you knew the starting number or any number along the way, and if you knew what the scheme was, you would know all the numbers for the future because they're deterministic. So there are casino cheats who do the following. They'll watch some slot machine. 
And there's some, I'm going to make it a little old lady with her cup, putting her, you know, quarters in. And they'll know, because they know what the numbers are, and they know how they're coming. They'll know that in 120 more pulls, the winning number is going to come out. And so they'll come up and say, oh, and then they'll spill a cup of coffee on them. I'm so sorry. Here's $20. Please go get your dress clean. And then they take over. Anything that's deterministic, people who are intelligent mathematically can get behind, figure out. Shuffling machines are the same story. Um, the shuffling machines, many of the shuffling machines that are used now use simply simply use random number chips and so they're essentially completely deterministic but complicated so you have to be me uh, or some of you uh, in order to figure them out. They're math problems but they're not random. Uh, so uh, whereas when I shuffle cards you know my biology, my psychology dictates how I drop right and and, and that that seems to be at least for the next hundred years beyond mathematical prediction. And then it's riffle, riffle, box, riffle. That's the professional's casino poker shuffle. Can I ask what you feel about people who cheat casinos by using their mathematical skill and know-how? Because I know it's, it's wrong. Well, what, what makes it wrong? Well, that's my question, I guess. Okay, so no, I... Like, I do, you, do you think these people are cheats? No, I, 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 don't, I don't at all. Let me try to answer that. If somebody comes into a casino and bends cards or marks them or does something actually physically against the rules, that's cheating, it's against the law, they've broken the law. You know, the law is the law, it's very clear. But if somebody's thinking, well, you can't stop people from thinking, right? So if somebody notices that when all the aces are out, your odds are worse. So don't bet when, you know, watch the cards and when the aces go out, don't bet. It's a fact of life that in playing blackjack, if, um, if, there are, if there are very few picture cards left, cards which are 10 jack, queen, or king, um, the, the chance that the casino wins is bigger. You, it, it doesn't feel wrong to me at all to think and, you know, not make stupid bets. For example, in, in roulette or in dice or in any game, there are certain bets that are crazy. You're giving the casino, you know, 20% of your money. And there are other bets in which you're giving a tenth of 1% to make the bet. It doesn't seem silly to say, well, this bet's stupid. That bet is, uh, is much better for me. I'll play longer. I have a better chance of winning. So thinking is not cheating. Thinking is thinking. The people who are um, the people who are figuring out how the random number generators work and then trying to move in seems to me that they're just thinking, and that's just fine. If somebody puts a paperclip into a machine, that's cheating. That's you know that's possession of burglary tools. Now the casinos don't like they call the the they call the. Um, the, the, the card counters, you know, cheats. But that's their publicity. That's like, you know, any political party calling their opponent idiots, right? Uh, it doesn't seem to me, as long as you're not, as long as you're playing by the rules, thinking shouldn't be outlawed. Uh, and uh, there are wonderful stories of people able to think through and, and, and defeat their opponents. As a warning, uh, is it illegal is it, it, to bring a computer in your pocket <laughs> to uh, help you remember, for example? Well, the casinos try to bar those. If they catch you with a computer in a casino, uh, they'll, uh, they'll try to arrest you for possession of burglar's tools. Now, you'll beat that in court, but they'll keep you engaged in court for four years. So you probably would be better off just thinking. Um, uh, and uh, so I don't, it, it seems, I mean, the spilling the, the spilling the coffee on the lady, that's pushing it a little bit. Uh, I think I wouldn't engage in such a thing, but it isn't the same as going in with a, with a pistol and holding up the place. I think your question is a wonderful question because it's a lesson for any business. That is, uh, you know, how could it be that a business thinks it has expertise 
and it doesn't have to hire outside experts. I mean, that, I, you know, it's, it, well, first of all, this is a case in point. It's true. That is, they, they didn't, they don't, and they still don't work with mathematicians.